Hello fellow philosophers and scientists that are there with Milo Wolf uh, celebrating the Sagnac Awards. We'd like to um, welcome you from down under on the southwest coast of Australia. Hello scientists and philosophers. Hi scientists and philosophers. Very good. <laughs> Congratulations Milo for winning the Sagnac Award. It's wonderful to see your work in the waste structure of matter recognised. Congratulations. So we thought what we do is we've gone back to some uh, video interviews that we did of you 10 years ago at Berkeley and we're going to pick out uh, some of our favourite little bits and we'll show everyone uh, some of the uh, wonderful discoveries you've made. So the first clip we'd like to show you is the starting point of Milo Wolf's discoveries where he was curious and he wondered about the source of the de Broglie wave uh, that underpins quantum physics for relative motion. And this is him telling his story of his first discovery. So how did you discover the spherical standing wave structure? I was curious. 1955, I took a course in quantum mechanics, and this was a graduate course, and I had never had a course, any course, in quantum mechanics. I assumed I was very stupid. I never understood the origin of de Broglie waves, which says that a particle goes along like this, it has a wave which is inversely proportional to its momentum, Planck's constant divided by the mass times the velocity. That's called the de Broglie wave leak because de Broglie first proposed it. And of course, de Broglie didn't know where it came from either. Nobody ever knew, but I didn't know that they didn't know. So you thought you were? A I bit just silly. thought I was stupid. I never <laughs> opened my mouth in the class. Thirty years later, I just kept thinking about that thing, and it just bothered me all the time. One day, I was reading a book called All About Waves by a professor at Harvard, it suddenly occurred to me that there must be some kind of a complicated Doppler going on. I wrote down a few equations. I discovered that only if you have a combination of an inward wave and an outward wave do you get the de Broglie wavelengths. You're talking about a combination of an inward wave and an outward wave of two different particles? Yeah, yeah, two different particles. So you're talking about an interaction of four waves? Right, yeah. right. There's a particle here, a particle there. One's moving relative to the other. So there, it's relative motion. Therefore, if you write these equations out, you get that the de Broglie wavelength is there. And I was also amazed to discover that Einstein's increase of mass was there. All the things which happened with relative velocity showed up. And I said to myself, this is so simple. I, 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 I didn't think I discovered anything. I must admit, when you tell me this, Milo, it sort of gives a shiver down my spine. Oh, yeah. Because what you're telling me is that you've united quantum theory with Einstein's special relativity. Yeah. In that yeah. one equation. Yeah, I did. That's what you're telling yeah. me, isn't it? But this seems so simple to me because these, these simple bits of algebra weren't all that complicated. So I says, yeah, yeah, this is a natural result. I'm sure somebody else has already found this because people investigated quantum theory and waves and people have been using in and out ways for 30 years. They always thought they were imaginary though, not real. I went back and I searched for six months and little by little I realized nobody had ever found this. I must be the only one. But it took several months for me to realize that. When I realized it I said, gee, I really got something. So I kept on studying and investigating it. And of course the result is this book. Just, just tells all of that work. The second very profound discovery of Marlow Wolf is the question of where do the in waves come from? Now, uh, traditionally we thought of matter as being made of solid, solid little particles. Soccer ball's useful with the World Cup on. Hey, your soccer ball, Stella. Um, they had the spherical part right, but the solid material particle was incorrect. The correct solution is a spherical in-out wave structure, where the wave centre creates the particle. And that then leads to the problem, where do the in-waves come from? So we can imagine that we have a little particle and it ripples out waves out, but where do the in-waves come from? And Milo Wolf deduced this using Huygens' principle, that the in-waves come from the out waves of all the other matter in the universe. This has profound consequences, this uh, discovery of Milo's. Explains Mach's principle and why the mass of an object is determined by all the other matter in the universe. It explains how we can see all the other matter in the universe, i.e., empirical knowledge and the uh, central foundations of science. And thirdly, it unites 
our finite observable universe with infinite space because it works out that wherever you are in space you always see yourself in the center of your observable universe and all the other matter around you is creating your matter. How do you explain in the space going out into our universe where these in waves come from and where do the out waves go to? Well at first sight if you just consider one wave center and you imagine it got out waves and it got in waves, you're immediately puzzled, you know, because you, you say, well, gee, the out waves go on and on and on, and they get lost out there in infinity somewhere. And the in waves, you immediately say, where did they come from? But that a serious mistake was to think of it all alone. You m must realize that the, our universe is just filled with uh, wave centers. Every hydrogen atom, this pencil, wave centers everywhere. And so wave centers, uh, the waves go out and they interact with, with other wave centers. So there's a lot of exchange going on. Milo Wolf, in his, uh, one of his video clips, talks about the violin and the fact that um, we know that uh, musical instruments and notes have discrete frequencies. And he relates this to the uh, light photon, which is a discrete energy exchange of light. And it came to be known as a particle, and yet Max Planck, who discovered the discrete energy exchanges of light, always considered electrons as resonators. And here's Milo Wolf's explanation. A single particle all by itself doesn't do very much. Mm -hmm. But if you take two particles, a proton and an electron, and you put them together, they, their waves join. And their waves join uh, with certain rules. Electron waves will form patterns. The violinist uh, knows that there's patterns inside that violin case. So, in the same way, these patterns form between particles. Helium is more complex than hydrogen, or you combine uh, a hydrogen with an oxygen, and you get very, very, very complex arrangements. Of course, every chemist and a biologist knows these arrangements as the atomic table. Any exchange in one of these complex wave structures can only happen if it goes to one wave structure to another wave structure. It can't go halfway between because the wave structures have to be like waves on a string. You have a violin string, you pluck it, always has the same note. That is, the waves on it are a pattern. A certain frequency of a standing wave. Yeah, it's just what they call a standing wave. Uh, kids wave a, a jump rope up and down, it has always a, a fixed pattern. Well, the, the wave patterns of atoms and molecules have fixed patterns. When an energy changes, it changes moving from one pattern to another pattern. And only certain are allowed, and that explains why and only certain, only certain energy yeah. states are allowed. Okay. Albert Einstein also played the violin, and Albert Einstein and Milo Wolf have been my two central influences in physics and philosophy. And so in ending, I thought I'd read a beautiful little tribute from Albert Einstein that applies to the work that Milo Wolf does and applies to our children. My dear children, I rejoice to see you before me today, happy youth of a sunny and fortunate land. Bear in mind that the wonderful things you learn in your schools are the work of many generations, produced by enthusiastic effort and infinite labor in every country of the world. All this is put into your hands as your inheritance in order that you may receive it, honor it, add to it, and one day faithfully handed on to your children. Thus do we mortals achieve immortality in the permanent things which we create in common. If you always keep that in mind, you will find a meaning in life and work and acquire the right attitude towards other nations and ages. Beautiful book. Recommend Einstein's ideas and opinions <laughs> to everyone. Isn't that beautiful? Goodbye, Milo, and congratulations. Congratulations. We wish we were there. Bye. Say good night, Milo. Say good night, Milo, while you wave. Oh, oh nice. nice. This is Stella Wolf Hazelhurst. She is a scientist of the future.